Hey everyone, um, I'm Elizabeth Lane, and I am one half of the band Duet, um, and I'm here in the studio today to do the start of a series called, uh, I think we're going to call it How Do You Duet, um, where we're going to kind of take you behind the scenes, talk about some technical things and tricks and tips and stuff that we use um, to make music. Uh, and so I am, uh, for those who don't know me, I am the bass player, oboe player, kind of the weird multi-instrumentalist of the band. I also do a lot of, not that Mary isn't, but um, I also do the main kind of mixing studio engineering parts of it um, and uh, have been building my studio for several years. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about what I've been doing is I've been working on this song called Thousand Pirouettes. It's a really cool song. I'm really loving it. It's one of the first songs we wrote together. Um, most of it's been done in terms of writing. We've had it done for a while. Uh, we just had to fix, you know, re-record some of the vocal lines and everything. So we've been working on the vocals. And I'm going to take you over to the mixer here uh, to show you. Now you can see I've stripped the mixer way down just to what I'm going to talk about today. Um, there's a lot more tracks usually, uh, but I got, I hid them so we only see what we need to see for this vocal mixing tricks, I guess. Uh, so we have here the melody, the harmony, a delay send, and a, a reverb send, um, and then the stereo out channel, which is the master. So this vocal is... Just two parts, which kind of goes along with a lot of what the music is doing, where you have one line and then kind of doing these really consonant, parallel kind of harmonies. So I'll just play for you what they sound like dry. Um, so here's, here's the melody. Seven years ago, seal tears above the gold. Shall walk of it a thousand pirouettes. So that's kind of fun. It's a very airy, light vocal. We definitely, uh, Mary, when she sang it, she really wanted to get this, this ethereal kind of sounds very out there, not, you know, it's not an in-your-face vocal line. Um, to complement that, she sang the harmony, which is lower, and again, kind of doing this parallel uh, situation. So I'll play it for you now. Seven years ago, seal tears above the glow. So that's pretty straightforward, just kind of another harmony going along uh, with the melody kind of a little more resonant if you listen to the, the timbre of it. Um, together, you know, they sound pretty good. Seven years ago, seal tears above the glow. I mean, these are pretty straight kind of power chord almost harmonies, which, okay, so that's a very nice vocal, but it's very, very dry. And, uh, sorry about this, let me get my email out of the way here. So, one of the things we wanted to do is make it very ambient, very big, spread it out, um, get it really, really kind of thick sounding vocals. So, the first thing I did was add this reverb send here, which is this bright, I realize all my channels are blue and green, sorry. Uh, the verb channel here. And basically, I stuck in a uh, Reverence plugin, which comes with Cubase, on a pretty nice little stereo, um, stereo, LA Studio, you know, kind of a nice open wooden studio uh, convolution uh, impulse response. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the reverb for the two, um, the two tracks. So. You can definitely hear then what happens when we go through these two tracks. Now with the reverb, it should sound quite a bit thicker uh, and give it kind of that nice open reverby sound. Seven years ago, seal tears above the glow. 
So you can get it pretty thick. It's not a really, really long reverb. I didn't want it to get too mushy in there. But again, it sounds pretty good. Um, and I like that for the most part, but I wasn't quite happy with that. So I went further and decided to really go after it. And I added in this stereo delay. Um, again, using the stock stereo delay plugin here. Uh, here's my settings. Again, the sends have their 100% mix. So when you do a send, for those who don't know, um, you're essentially making a duplicate of the audio. So you're kind of splitting the path and you have one signal going straight in like normal, right through kind of what we were hearing at the beginning. Then you have this other one that goes into the effect and then you can blend the two in the mix or you can blend the two, you know, the affected version and the non-affected version, you can get them at the right level. So now here's what happens when I add the delay. Uh, and you'll see this gets really, starts getting pretty wild. Seven years ago, sealed tears above the glow, shallow walk of it, a thousand pirouettes. So I'm going to play it one more time, but this time, listen, like one thing that when I did this was bothering me was that when you have a delay, it's sort of makes multiples of the main part and puts them out stereo, main, main signal and puts them out very nice in stereo. The main track had all this great reverb on it, but as soon as I started to bring things through, this, like the delayed signals didn't. So you had this, it, to me it sounded really weird because you'd have this great reverby main vocal line and then the repetitions, the delay signals, ended up very dry sounding. And, and it just felt really weird. So I'll play it again for you. Here's, here's what it sounds like. Just kind of listen for kind of like how parts of the copies sound kind of saturated reverby and some of the parts kind of feel like they're getting chopped off. Seven years ago, sealed tears above the glow, shallow walk of So, I mean, that's not, you know, not bad. It's, it's subtle, but here's what happens here. And here's one of the cool routing things I did is you'll see here in the delay channel, what I ended up doing is sending the delay out to the reverb as well. So now all of the little stereo delays that I have are also going in and it's, it's a small, I'm not sending a lot. I'm at, you know, negative 19 here, DB. Um, so I'm not sending a lot of it too, but it just helps those, those reverbs just give them a little bit of a tail and give them a little space. And so here's, here's what that sounds like. Seven years ago, sealed tears above the glow, shallow walk of it, a thousand feet. So it just helps those ends of the phrases just kind of fade out a little bit more, hang a little bit longer in the air. Um, and that was, you know, I was pretty happy with that. But then one thing that was still bothering me is we have a lot of these very hard sounds, you know, thousand pirouettes, you know, these T's and these S's and, um, you know, P sounds, things that are a little more plosive. And they're very great. I love that sound when she sings and they sound so great. The problem is when you go to the delay and you have these multiple repetitions, it felt like there was too much clicking. I mean, a thousand pirouettes. You know, it almost felt like, and that was distracting and it felt like there was just too much little high, jaggy, crinkly bits. Um, again, here, you can listen. Seven years ago, So you need those hard bits to hear and for the articulation of the um, main vocal line, but in all this kind of swirly bits around it, I really didn't want it to kind of go because it felt like it was drawing an ear around. So here's kind of a cool thing I did is I put a de-esser on 
Um, I'll open it up right here. Uh, and I put it on the delay send. So the main signal is not affected by this, um, but anything coming into the delay, and I have this set really aggressive here. Uh, the threshold is really low, and the frequency, I swept it pretty low. So basically, anything that's coming into this that has like a high frequency that's a even a little bit kind of out there, it's just clamping down on it, but only in that delay track. So what that allows you to do is hit the articulation um, in the main kind of vocal line, the main melody and harmony have the articulation they need to carry it, but then all this other delay stuff, I'm clamping the articulations down so you really only get the more um, soft, round sounds. And it just keeps it from getting a little too distracting with these, these very consonant sounds. So I have it on, and I'll leave up the plugin so you can see um, what it's doing and how much I'm actually taking out of the, uh, uh, the delay signal. And here's what it sounds like. Seven years ago So that gets a lot less distracting with those those consonant sounds popping up. And I love using the deesser because it's a, a deesser is essentially a compressor with like a filter on it, um, and so it just clamps down on those high frequencies. I, I could have done it with EQ, and I did a little bit of EQ in there, but I just found that like that deesser, it's a little more dynamic. It doesn't feel as when the non plosive bits come through. It just sounds a little more natural. Uh, so I really like that. And again, it's really strong setting down here uh, because it's on the effect send. It's not on the the main line. Um, I use a deesser on the main line too, but it's a lot less strong of a setting. Um, so that's basically it. Again, taking these two vocal tracks, the melody and the harmony, combining them, getting this nice big sound, and uh, making a really, you know, just kind of polishing it. Uh, so here's what it sounds like. I'm going to remove all the mutes and solos and everything. And uh, here's what that same line sounds now with the uh, with all the music. So that's the song we got right now. Um, thanks for watching. And again, this mix is probably going to change. It's not final, but I was really excited about kind of this fancy routing and really how to use that de-esser like that that I really just wanted to share with all of you. So I'm going to get back to working on the mix here. Um, I got a lot of work to do on the bass. So uh, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Let us know what other things you might like to see, and I'll try to get to them. Bye.